<laughs> I just want to quickly wine in the uh -huh. yeah. 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 I think we can just manage and I think we're good. We can ignore the yeah. rest. Okay. Okay. You know, this, this thing is just But when did you actually cook? Yeah. 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 No, I put. So that's okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, see, uh, I brought cheese and I wanted to put nice baguette. I didn't even have baguette this morning. So I brought just random bread and cheese. So. Yeah, All right, so well, welcome. So this, uh, uh, what is it? Third or fourth appointment? Fourth. In this uh, series, where we're going to look at the theoretical foundation of neural analysis, uh, neural data analysis, and look at. Uh, uh, with the idea that to get a better understanding of these uh, formulas and definitions that we always see in uh, papers and we apply in MATLAB. So last time we talked about statistical dependence and independence. So when statistics Properties of the probability distributions of multiple variables tell us that these variables have something to do with one another, as opposed to having nothing to do with one another. Right? So, from the concept of statistical dependence comes another very important concept, which is the one of prediction. Prediction means I know the value of variable x and I can tell you something about the value of variable y. So for example, I know which month in the year we are in and I can tell you something about what the most likely temperature will be. Right? So in statistical terms, what we actually call prediction regression and so regression is something that we use all the time so <coughs> if you are plotting data like that and then you fit a straight line through that cloud of data you are making a, uh, an operation of regression. And the idea is that these two things are very closely related. So we characterized uh, for normally distributed, so multivariate normally distributed variables, which is anything which is to say that essentially you have a distribution that is somehow ellipsoid or cigar shaped in some multi-dimensional space, then you have linear regression. And as we will see, when we talk about statistical dependency, in this case of this simple normal distribution, we we uh, characterize that in terms of the correlation coefficient. And we'll see that regression, in this case linear regression, can actually be expressed in terms of these correlation coefficients. In fact, we are very much looking at the same thing from a different point of view. So let's get, let's take a step back. So now I start with introducing uh, multivariate normal uh, distribution which are sort of the prototype but let's make it a bit more general what do we mean by regression regression we can express in terms of uh, conditional probability distribution Remember, we define these things, probability of x given y, or probability of y given x. 
and we described this concept of expectation and we said that expectation is the idealization of the mean. Okay, so if you measure many samples, you compute, uh, you compute the mean, you have an empirical variable. If you imagine to do that on an infinite sample and therefore getting an exact idea of the underlying probability distribution, then you call that the expectation. So regression is the expectation of y given x. And this formula is generic. This will hold for probability distribution that are uh, horseshoe shaped or completely generic or bubbles isolated. However, when we have a form like this, then we say that actually the regression, so this, so this is a function of x, because for any value of x you get a different expectation. And we say, say for linear regression, that means we have a linear function. And this linear function is So now in the case of a of multivariate normal distributions, these have an interesting form. So here you have two parameters, right? So you have so alpha is the intercept of this line and beta determines the slope. Okay. So beta has this form. What is this? It's the correlation coefficient multiplied by the variance of y divided by the variance of x. Mm. So, basically, that tells us that the biggest the correlation coefficient, the steepest this regression line would be, when you make the variance of y and the variance of and you might remember that rho can be at most 1, so it's included between minus 1 and 1, which means that in the extreme case of perfect correlation, and so perfect correlation means that the data lie on a straight line, essentially. They like exactly the same. Then the slope is exactly the ratio of the variances. Okay. So this is nice because now I gave you a prediction form a formula based on the parameters of the distribution. So these guys here. So the variance of x, variance of y, the correlation coefficient describe variability. And beta is your regression coefficient, so that is what gives you a prediction. Okay? So these are two aspects of the same underlying thing. But so that's nice. So, uh, quick, quick question. This yeah. row is the R value that you get when you just do a core, correlation. When you do core in MATLAB. And, yeah. Correct. Yeah. 
So, so this formula is strictly true for multivariate normal distributions. But even if your data have not a multivariate normal distribution, this formula is still interesting. Why? Well, in that case, we said that this is a function of x. And a function means whatever function. This is a function, and this is a function, right? So suppose that I am lazy, and I want to say, yeah, I don't care about the shape of this function. I want to approximate it. I want to approximate it with the simplest thing that I have. And that simple thing, simplest thing is still a straight line. Now we changed, huh? because before the straight line was the absolute the ground truth. Now it became an approximation. Yeah? So you see the, you, you see the difference, right? So now this form with this beta is still giving you the it's not giving you the ground truth anymore, but it's giving you the best approximation. In what sense? We call it this is a prediction called it y hat. We ask if we take, if we substitute y hat for y. How much do we lose, or how much do we get wrong? Then I compute something called error. What's the error? It's going to be y minus y, uh, y hat. I don't care about the sign, so I'm going to put a square, because I want to count positive and negative errors the same, and I take the expectation. Now, I can say I want the alpha and beta that minimize the errors. And that's still that. That's what we call the least squares method. Let's recapitulate. We start by giving you an exact expression of the regression formulas for multivariate normal distributions. Then we say, let's let it go, release this multivariate normal approximation, and let's just find our linear regression that does the best. And then so we seek to minimize the error. That's my error. If you minimize the error, you get, you get this. Okay. So, so when you make a regress line using, for example, the MATLAB function regress, that's what you're doing. Okay. And so the R bar U and the beta are related. Uh, all right, so, and you have oh, there are a number of formulas for all of this, which we may or may not cover. Uh, what do I want to say? That's, again, is the notion of conditional expectation as regression. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, let's get that. It gets more interesting when I get uh, that I extension instead. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, this is an interesting formula. It goes. Uh, it goes suppose that you have two variables Suppose that, so the inter intercept is zero to make things easy, and my data like that. Then I get a best regressor, which is this, and beta is formula, and so that means that the steep, the slope of this curve is given by beta. So this formula may, you know, a little geometry may actually be a little bit strange to you. Why is that? Well, suppose that now I, I take this same data and now I plot it like that. Y on the x-axis and x on the y-axis. So let's then then I have a, let's call this beta y. I have another regression law, this time for x. And beta x is who? Well, I can just swap, the correlation coefficient is a symmetric thing. Let's still say, say if I swap x with y, doesn't matter. it's not going to change. So I'm just going to swap x and y here. That's interesting. So now this and this are not the same line. If you just take the plane and you swap the variable, that means that if I have a general line of a form sorry, y equals cx, then x is equal to c to the minus 1 times y. But beta x is not the inverse of beta y. So you see, because if I if I took the inverse of that, I would get rho to the minus one. But here I still have rho. Take the inverse, this part uh, would flip, but here I would get a inverse to the minus one power, which I don't get. So this is the same row. Yeah. Is, yes, but that tells you that regressing x on y and regressing y on x 
are two distinct operations. So the optimal regressor is different. And actually, if you think about it, it does make sense because when I regress x, y on x, I'm telling you, I know x, tell me y. When I regress x on y, I say x is known, uh, y is known, tell me x. Yeah. 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 So there is a fundamental uh, difference. So, okay. So that. Uh, that is an interesting. So here the book talks about the prediction theorem. Prediction theorem is what I call the method of least squares. And the fact that regression as we define minimize the least squares is the progression. Uh, prediction theorem, which you can actually uh, you can actually demonstrate. You can prove it. So you see that there are a lot there are a lot of things that are related in interesting ways, and there are lots of subtleties. And this is this is one. That when you do the prediction, it depends on who is the predictor and who is the variable to predict. Okay, questions? All right. What if I have more than two variables? Well, then everything scales. And that's how it scales. So <coughs> the means become a vector. Now, if I have m variables, I have m readouts recording the activity of m neurons, looking at m voxels in fMRI, anything. The variance, so the variance and the correlation coefficient merge into one the, uh, thing, which is called the covariance matrix. You see that the covariance matrix includes, <coughs> on the diagonal, it includes the variance of the single variables. And then it includes products of the variance of the of pairs of variables times the correlation coefficient of those particular two variables. So, and again, here you distinguish between sigma, which is the covariance matrix, which is an idealization. That comes from the probability of the actual probability distribution, which is something that lives some, somewhere in uh, heaven. And the sample covariance matrix, where you substitute each one of these elements with their empirical definition. Okay? So that is. Can okay. yeah. I ask it, uh, you, you said yeah. if you had a question about this, so I thought of one. So yeah. what is the consequence of this in terms of real data analysis? So we usually look at the row, right, which is the correlation between two variables. Where, where do we use the betas in, in data analysis in general? Well, you use betas if, uh, in many ways, one thing if you're doing uh, Predictions so or any kind of decoding. I might have, I might have a, 
like a response that is linearly dependent on the stimulus, I don't know, light intensity of a, of a dot stimulus and activity of a neuron. Mm -hmm. If you want to predict the, if you want to predict the activity of the neuron from the in light intensity, you get one regression form. If you get the, the other way around, so you get the sort of predicted the light intensity from the neural activity, you get a different form. So when they say talk about beta matrix in fMRI, that's no, but that's that's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. when you have a each beta exactly. is a beta value for yeah. each voxel. The betas are this. So they are typically, when you analyze fMRI data, more often than not, you have a regression model, which is a multivariate regressor, regression. So you have something that looks like And so on. You can have many predictors. Typically, there you put a mix of actual predictors of interest and nuisance predictors. I could be respiration, I could movement, and what have you. So the X's are the design, design matrix. Yes. So when you create an MRI, you create your thing in a way you create it so that you find out the betters. And they often like to plot the betters nowadays. And so the betas are found with the, the multivariate equivalent of the bivariate formulas that I showed, so from the correlation coefficients and the variances. So formulas are a little bit more complicated, but it's always the same idea. But in IFIS research, you have an analogous, basically. In IFIS research, yes. I mean, uh, I mean, I made the example from visual stimuli because there it's, you have the linear dependencies. If I have to look at hippocampal place fields, just to say something I know well, then a linear model doesn't work well because, because the activity of a neuron is not a linear function of position. Right? So if you have a this field is a function of x, activity will be something like that, or something like that. So that means you need to use slightly trickier methods. That's, uh, but actually, actually the idea is not that different. It's just that you don't ap apply linear formula. And it seems like this would be an inverse square, right? Hmm? Is this in this room? Am I geometry so they don't go this Well, uh, this would be, a, you could fit with a Gaussian mm -hmm. or uh, no, uh, the inverse square of parabola would be like that. I so know, right. negative, so it be kind of yeah. So, that's. Oh, okay. So any questions? So now I'm going to go a little bit into information theory, which sounds scary. Yeah. It's not. What, that, what do we mean by information theory? Well, essentially, we want to take the same concepts of statistical dependency, but we want to put them, uh, statistical dependency uh, relation, uh, relatedness, I would say, and prediction. But now we want to put them in a framework where that is going to be more general and is going to work beyond the linear case. No, no case. So you can start talking about information theory from many different points. Most books that I know 
start from entropy. Here starts from another concept that is called the kullback leibler divergence, which is, again, not as scary as it seems. This was in the Richards paper, right? Richards et al. Yeah. Nature. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I've been wondering why I know the term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's the kullback leibler divergence? Well, it's a measure it's a distance. What's a distance? <laughs> it's not a distance. Well, it's a distance in the colloquial term, it's not a distance in the mathematical term. But it's, it's a way to say how two probability distributions are similar or different from one another. And you want to do it in a way that has to do with information. And I'm going to try to express this in words be, 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 uh, without going into formulas. But so here's the problem. So I have a signal. Well, I have a variable. Suppose that, I mean, so in this lab we're almost there. But not quite there, so where? So somebody's doing an experiment of CDL, and then is essentially calling Lisa by cell phone and uh, telling them, telling her the results on uh, uh, each time there is an outcome. <laughs> so, don't do that. Huh? please don't do that. <laughs> yes. So. Now, this is of course very tedious and may take a long time, so you want actually to find a trick. And, and you want to find a trick to save some time. And what's the trick? Well, the trick is you find a code. So now, which code is optimal depends on the probability. What you're going to do is you're going to exchange on your communication channel by phone, you're going to exchange symbols. And the smart thing to do is to use short symbols for the most common outcomes and longer symbols for the least common outcomes. So suppose that you have a limited number, so you, have, you are using letters, so you have 26 characters. 